All right, so in this example, we'll look at the magnetic field around a solenoid, which effectively is a, a bunch of, of loops of wire side by side by side. All right, so let me draw a solenoid really quick. Bunch of loops, there we go. And this has a current, we'll say going up that end, such that it goes down that end, right? And so I've kind of drawn this from a side bandage point. These loops here are going into and out of the page, okay? And they are usually, right, very close together, if not side by side. So this solenoid is of total length, capital L. And if there's a current going through this wire that's arranged in loops like this, that means using the right-hand rule, there's a magnetic field around the wire at all points, okay? So using the right-hand rule, let me uh, kind of translate this in another vantage point. Let me rotate this 90 degrees, and I'll draw it like this. It's a bunch of loops, bunch of loops, and then it goes down, okay? So the current was coming up, on that side and down on that side. In that case, if you put your thumb on the top, the current is going that direction. On the, if your thumb is on the bottom, right, it's going to the left. So that means that inside this loop, the magnetic field is into the page or into the screen. And outside, it means that it's out of the screen. Okay? So drawing that above, that means that there's a magnetic field to the right. Okay, we'll draw that in blue. And then above, well, in theory, we'll, it should be to the left. Right? We'll see where it's not quite that way it is, but it isn't. Okay. So let's see. We need to use Ampere's law to find the magnitude of the magnetic field inside and outside. Okay. So a closed integral of B dot DS is equal to mu naught times I enclosed, right? The current enclosed by some Amperian loop that we are free to create. Now, what's the best Amperian loop shape to try and enclose current? in the wire, right? Specifically, this solenoid part, right? How are we going to draw an Ampereian loop? Should it be into the screen like this, right? Behind and then in front? Should it be like that? Um, well, in that case, yes, current is going through, right? But if you think about it, the loops are very, very close together, right? And so if you have kind of a loop, an Ampereian loop in the same general axis as one of these solenoid loops, that's not going to be very good. That's another or effective way of, of doing that, right, That as our Ampereian loop. That's not the best way. So let me go back here, take that away. Let's instead turn our Ampereian loop 90 degrees and have it go like this. Right? And so now the plane of our Ampereian loop is in the direction of the solenoid. And if I were to draw it down below, it would be like that. Right? If we're looking along the plane of this loop. You can think of it as the normal to the plane is like that. Right. So this is a better um, orientation for our loop because now we just need to take into account the currents in that section, right? Only currents above here, right here, which actually is the currents in every loop, all of them are going perpendicular to the plane, right? And this is a much better way. So we'll say that that Empyrean loop is of length 
uh, we'll call it lowercase l since capital L was taken. And I'll actually label each of these sections, right? Each of these segments. So that's one, two is over there, three, and then four is over here. <laughs> and so our Ampereian loop needs to be evaluated for every one of these segments in the left side of Ampere's law. So this closed integral, well, again, if the current value is steady, if it's constant, the magnitude of the magnetic field will be constant. So let's just hold on to that tidbit for a second and now evaluate the cosine or evaluate the dot product for every segment. So that's a closed loop, meaning I need to integrate from section 1, B, D, S, cosine of that angle in segment 1. Ooh, the segment 1, the D, S is, whoops, Segment 1, ds is that direction, right, to the right. But that's also the direction of magnetic field, b and then ds. So theta is 0. Then we need to add the integral for segment 2. Segment 2, ds, is going up now. Right? I suppose I just as easily could have gone this direction, but I'm not. I'm going up for segment 2, so that's our ds direction, and that's perpendicular to b. So now, that angle is 90. Okay. And we need to add the integral for segment 3, b ds cosine. Now the ds is going back to the left but the magnetic field is still remaining, pointing to the right. So that's actually 180. And the segment 4, BDS cosine of minus 90. And all of this equals mu naught I enclosed. Okay. So which of these four terms on, on the left cancel out? Well, it's the ones that have cosine of plus or minus 90. So that's zero, that's zero. And so we have B, now the integral of DS, well, that's simply L, right? The DS for one segment is, is of length L, because that's what I've specified. Cosine of zero is one. And then I'm gonna put minus B, times L for segment 3. But let's kind of put this as an asterisk, okay? Up there, that's a little asterisk. And I'll explain why momentarily. That's all for the left side, whoops. The right side of the equation is mu naught. What's the charge enclosed in this Empyrean loop? Well, hmm, in this loop, box here that we've artificially drawn, there's only a certain number of current loops, like 1, 2, and 3. That means that there's a certain ratio of current going through this loop to the entire solenoid, right? Again, there's some percentage of I enclosed to the total current. And how do we find that percentage? Well, I enclosed is some percentage. Well, it's of length L, which is some percentage of the total length, capital L. So our percentage comes from the ratio of lengths of our Ampereian loop to the entire solenoid. Right there. And that's what we plug in for our current enclosed. And so, looking back on the left side now, that B asterisk, right? Why did I asterisize, if that's a word? Why did I do that? Well, let's look down here. Let me redraw this solenoid a little bit differently once again. So that's one wire, that's the second wire, that's the third wire, and that's a fourth wire. This is kind of a a cross-section. 
So on top, it's coming out, and on the bottom, it's going in. Okay, these are currents, remember. So which direction is the magnetic field then? Using the right-hand rule, your thumb in the direction of the current, that means that inside, predominantly, it should be to the right. And above, it should predominantly be to the left. But what actually happens is something like this. Right? Normally, these wires here, 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 here are right next to one another. Right? Normally. In this expanded example, there's a magnetic field that actually, whoops, that actually goes, it tries to go like this, right? To loop around that wire. But there's also a magnetic field from this one trying to do the same thing. Like this way. And so what happens is that in oops in blue is that this wire should go like this, right? Up like that. For the second wire, it should go down the same way. Oops. Right? That same way. And so in between, they effectively cancel out. And so what we get is what I've drawn here. Have kind of like a wave pattern. And in between them, we have another feature that's a little less pronounced. And then even more so. I guess I should say even less so. And so the lines on this side are all going to the right, and the lines on the left side also are going to the right, but they're effectively pointing inwards, right? such that overall the field is towards the right inside the solenoid. And then in theory, they loop around on themselves and are coming back and pointing to the left outside. Right, And so what we can say is that the magnetic field strength is pretty close to zero out there, right? Outside the solenoid compared to inside, the field strength is practically zero. So that's why this term here is practically zero. And so for the magnetic field, the script L's cancel, and we have mu naught I times, sorry, mu naught I divided by capital L. However, we need to also multiply by the number of currents, or, or the number of loops, one, two, three, inside our Ampyrean loop, or that pass through our Ampyrean loop. Okay, in. We'll call that the capital N, right? This solenoid is of total loops in. And so you can also write this as mu naught times i times lowercase n, which is typically known as the number density, the number of loops per total length. Right? And this is the magnitude of a magnetic field inside a solenoid with a current i. Right? And the direction, again, is to the right.